brain cells look for big structural abnormalities, big tumor, big bleed. So that's acute bleed. MRI and PET scan, <laughs> so those are great, but you know, not in you know, kind of acute situation. Even for a CT scan, you might need to sedate the person if they're you know, having an acute episode because they have to hold still. And like, you know, think if I'm having you know, big hallucinations, if you've never been in an MRI, it makes a little ping sounds. But if I'm having a hallucination and I hear this pinging, I'm not going to be able to tolerate being in a closed space like that. So EEGs look at electrical activity and eye check and auditory tests. Again, that's going to be after the person's you know, more stabilized. It's not; those are not acute tests. The CT MRI PET are looking. CTs are looking for structural or abnormalities, right? Well, the MRI PET they can look at you know other things too, like you know, <clears throat> like the uptake, like uptake of certain enzymes and like not enzymes, but uptake of. Or so an isotope and that medications might work better for them or not. But so that's longer term management. You can't see and I can answer this, but you can't see schizophrenia on the on the scan. Right? You can't you, you can well you they're you can see Alzheimer's. Their their scans do look yeah, their their scans do look different. They do. It's going right there. Yeah, somebody's wrong. Yeah, you know, I mean again the, the longer you have it, the more <laughs> Changes are going to be structural changes. Oh, look at this. You can see it. <laughs> so, nursing diagnoses, you know, just put them up there because we have to. They all make sense, though. Sensory perception, thought processes, social isolation. The only, t the only reason I have risk for violence down so low is because, you know, think risk for a risk for diagnosis is not as, high for, not as high a priority as an actual problem happening. And when you have, you have disturbed sensory perception, those are gonna be like the commands, hallucinations. That is a safety issue, but that's why they're taking higher priority. So here, you know, we can't think air we breathe in circulation. We are thinking safety first, but that's why those two are the safety up there. <coughs> And then, you know, things that could end their risk for violence, self directed or other directed, they have right there. Suspiciousness, panic, catatonic excitement, rage. Impaired verbal communication, so that's. Nothing, nothing new there. Big points are with many disorders we've talked about already is going to be what? Yeah. Facilitating the trust, understanding, building a good rapport, orienting to reality, not getting to a fight, but just presenting re what reality is. For self care deficit, and so think all of the, the related two parts are things we can act on. So if somebody was really withdrawn, we would do what? Try to get them involved into the group activities. If you know, they had rest, you know, things like, you know, you do have to, you know, wear clothes like an adult, like you can't, you know, walk around in a onesie and a diaper. Cognitive and perceptual impairment. Just again, you know, kind of getting them to block those auditory hallucinations out. <clears throat> and again, it's all, it's going to be, hopefully they'll have, you know, family that's involved because whether it's a mental health or physical chronic illness, it takes a big toll on people's families and that their family might withdraw from them because it's just, too much to deal with every day. And then ineffective health maintenance, these are all that. So you make sure that they're aware of knowledge or resources. So again, this is gonna be, you know, again, a 
hopefully that the person has somebody involved in their life. Because if I'm just disorganized, I can't think about this. I'm really just trying to get through every day. So our goal, so remember, assessment first, now planning. What are, what's our plan going to be that they won't hurt themselves or others? This ability to relate satisfactorily with other people, you know, not in an inappropriate or you know, non-socially acceptable way. That they know when they have distractions the reality. Remember that lack of insight, if I don't know anything's wrong. So I want to know that things are proper. And anxiety at a manageable level. Because with greater anxiety, just all those positive negative symptoms are gonna go come forward. So intervention, these really are kind of universal too. So now we have assessment, planning, interventions. So assess the amount of risk factors, so hopefully they're gonna be in a safe setting. Minimize environmental stimuli. So that means, you know, and hopefully it wouldn't be in this situation, but I, you know, my first job was, not that the children had schizophrenia, but they were you know, profoundly retarded, and you know, we were supposed to play you know, children's music. And we did when bosses were there. <laughs> but when you know, people weren't there, we would just play any music, like, but you know, Music that's going to kind of activate and maybe agitate people in those universities. So, calm environment, you know, low key interactions, not shouting at people, clear, concrete communications. So, just like you know, we already said you know, a couple lectures so far, you know, not multi step directions, you know, one thing at a time, make sure they complete that task before you move on. So, hallucination triggers. And they, like I said, a lot of times hallucination triggers, I mean, when they're in acute state, they might need medication to get sedated, but it's things, you know, not, you know, not feeding into them, not fighting about things that aren't there. And praise when they do, you know, do things that are based on reality. Like when they're recognizing, you know, I realize I am not, you know, the CEO of the car company. So if you can identify the you know cause of what it could be, you want to do that, and then reduce the stress. Now sometimes it could be you know they're getting agitated because they talk to somebody on the phone, so maybe you want to set limits on that phone call, or you know set limits with another resident if they're you know feeding in, or another you know client if they're feeding into that. So expectations concerning rules are same boundary setting. Behavior that can be misinterpreted. So you think if somebody already has problems with, with being suspicious or paranoia, you know, if you're you know whispering, you know, having side conversations, sure it could be work related, but that person doesn't know that. You know, they don't realize that, so that's going to make them more anxious. And you know, goes without saying, we're not ridiculing people, teasing people. And these really, all these interventions are in the care plan that's right in your text. So from page 355 to 360. So it has our goals, has the intervention. A common one for somebody who's had auditory hallucinations is really for the person to say out loud, you know, stop talking to me. But we can look for cues like that. Like if you see the person, you know, kind of stop and listen, you can see that they're, you know, they're responding to internal stimuli. It's a common thing they get charted. You can see that they're, you know, stopping and listening and, you know, kind of turning around. So, like anybody, want to respect, respect somebody's boundaries. Big thing they should be getting dressed in their own clothing, you know, as long as they're being safe, intervening early, and de escalation techniques. So, we already talked about this on Saturday. I'm just think back. 
you know, things like you see them getting more anxious. So what would be a behavior somebody's getting more anxious or agitated with? Right. What would but what would be the behavior, behavior they will be displaying? Oh, that's uh, pacing, uh, clenching fists, uh, talking louder. Yeah. yeah, talking louder, or you know, here, you know, again, just respond, you know, responding to things that you know aren't there, you know, or laughing to themselves inappropriately, like any behavior. So. And our usual, you know, calm voice, open body posture. Though, has it been driving from the point of you know, keeping yourself safe? I'm sure, that was in your orientation and your facilities. To so kind of like not, you shouldn't have anything between you and the door. Like you should always <clears throat> be closest to the door, and know how to activate your you know, emergency crisis response. So you should not be, you know, the patient should not be blocking you in the door. You should always be closest to the door. <clears throat> Which is what can be exhausting. Like, you, you are always thinking about, like, but you, you know, again, it's just a safety issue. And then administer medications. So in acute crisis states, think, how are we going to, you know, what's going to be our quickest action? Haldol. Well, how though, but at what form? <laughs> I am. I am, so my it's I am is a company line. It's kind of an inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> what? But, okay, again, I can't, don't tell anybody who said this. <clears throat> how though is not approved to give IV? You're not supposed to give IV. I give it IV for 30 years. All the time, I give how though IV all the time. Close your ears, Laurel. But <laughs> we just do. Because... Well, it comes in a liquid, it comes in a liquid formulation, and I, you know, I bad me, and I'm saying that I'm bearing my soul out to you. I should know why, you know, but it's just, it's not approved to give IV. It's supposed to be PO or IM. IM takes too long. Sorry, like you have to give it. Now we do give we do give lorazepam Ativan frequently too, but and that could be IV or PO, right? Or even PR. You can give it correctum. Oh. I don't know how they do that. Apparently they do that, Mr. I, I've never gone that far, but you Hold can. still. <laughs> but we want something to, you know, and again, it's acute, you know, acute versus maintenance issue here. Because, yes, we would want to take the, we want to take PO, you know, but if somebody's really, you know, because it is, I mean, and think how terrifying this is, too, to have these hallucinations. Like, it's just bad. So treatments, other than all of our interventions, so okay, global comment, if you have a question, then raise your hand, but when you're talking, other people can't hear. So if you have a question, say out, because you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna be asking you a question, you're like, oh, I didn't hear you, because you're talking. <laughs> so let's hang in there, we're almost finished. So again, we talked about all of their communication, you know, you, you know, great. We're going to be intensely to the drugs. I thought I moved this. Because really, what are, you know, milieu therapy, which, and what's milieu therapy? I have to go back. Oh, Janine, we can't have me ask you a question yesterday. Milieu, milieu therapy, that means. Right, yeah, just the setting. So, Structured setting, you know what's going to go on. You set up the boundaries, set up you know your relationships. That re really, I thought I had moved this. I'm sure I did, and my computer was acting funny today. Because really, ECT should is going to be last on this. Yeah, it's not ECT even on our. Oh, there it is. It is electroconvulsive therapy. So used for really refractory. Schizophrenia. It's not responding. So refractory means what? Something's refractory. That means it's just not responding to other treatments. Not responding to therapy. Not responding to medications. And electroconvulsive therapy is much. It's not like you know you see a bad horror, you know, bad TV shows, old movies. Like 
generally done in a short procedure unit these days. The person has an IV in place. They get you know a short acting you know, anesthetic and benzodiazepine agent. They really sleep through the whole thing. So it's much more. It's not like you know the classic is you know one fluid cuckoo's nest and they have a bite and down the thing. And really in the 40s and 50s that's how it was. It is not like that. But you know ECT still is used <coughs> for refractory schizophrenia, mood disorders, but it's different. And I don't want to say it's a last ditch effort, but it's, you know, you really want to exhaust other things before you go to that. Well, it's refractory disease. Yes. We just move that down. We're not, we're not jumping on it early on. Oh, is it all good? Yeah. You always have to, you have to do a million versions here, too. It's always how I get lost. So you can do group therapy. So you know what that's like, you know, group versus individual therapy. <clears throat> they can be recreational. You know, and what's, recrea what's the kind of uh, take point, take home point with recreational therapy? It's helpful because... Well, everybody do, and you're kind of expending energy, like expending energy. So it's not that if somebody's like in an acutely agitated state, but they kind of help, you know, really expend off energies when you're going to do recreational therapy. Not in an acute, not in an acute you know, situation, but help burn things off. And occupational therapy is going to be good for when they're getting released. Well, no, occupational therapy, like. Making, doing a painting, making a craft. Oh. So it's fine motor things. See, I always I thought, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No I, I was just thinking, I, I always thought of occupational therapy as they're getting you ready for the real life again. You know what I mean? True, yeah, like, I mean, some, depending on what it's for, occupational therapy could be, you know, focusing on activities of daily living. Oh. Typically more, it's like fine motor things. Oh, okay. Could it help with the tactile um, hallucinations? Like someone with tactile hallucinations? Well, you know, well, maybe not. I mean, it might be a trigger for them. Like, hopefully not. You know, hopefully they're under control because sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it can be a trigger. But it's just, it's kind of like an art, like to just creativity mm. helps get people released too. So they could be creating something <clears throat> that, you know, would help just, you know, like, like an art therapy. Gotcha. <laughs> so, drug management. So, the first generation antipsychotics. So, those are like the first ones developed. And I'll even tell you here, early 50s, 1952. They work by being <clears throat> dopamine antagonists. So, somehow they alter dopamine. And remember, dopamine really what? Dopamine is kind of the main culprit in schizophrenia. These adverse effects are on page 368. That's like two... You're talking about just the adverse effects of uh, the first generation? Are you... No, it had on page 368 right here, table 15-5, it has the first generation and second generation agents. And on 370, it has more of the adverse effects of the agents, which we're gonna talk about all don't worry. And another good thing, another good table in your text is on pages 79 through 81.